Well, hello my friends. So I have completely switched up the videos I was gonna do. I was kind of switching some things and now a lot of things have gotten switched. So today I wanted to share with you, since a lot of us are at home more than usual, I wanted to share with you guys some books and TV shows that I am loving. At the end, I'm gonna share, since I was a teacher for a while, my favorite online sites for education for kids as just something to keep them busy. I have some really, really good ones I actually don't hear a lot about online that are fantastic that my students loved. And so I figure I'll put that at the end because obviously not every single person watching this wants to hear those, but at least we'll do the TV and books here at the beginning for hopefully everyone to be interested in. So I've got my coffee. Do you have your coffee? Do you feel like you're drinking more coffee being home more? I, I don't know. I'm just drinking more coffee. <laughs> I can't explain it. And my hair is weird right now. You know when you like wash your hair and just kind of blow dry it and it's just like a little weird. Like I didn't straighten it, but I didn't and there's just like bumps, but fifth grade Jesse would be like losing it over the bumps in this ponytail. Okay. Let's talk TV first. Cause I know the vast majority of us watch TV. Uh, we don't have cable or anything. We have Netflix and Hulu. And then actually we only have Disney plus right now because we're Verizon members. And with that, like you got a free year or something like that. I mean, realistically, we probably in the future will buy it cause we have a toddler and also we are Disney people, but we also kind of own a lot of Disney DVDs and Blu-rays from being part of the movie club over the years. And so it's kind of one of those things I'm like, there's a lot on there we don't need, but Disney is doing a good job of like adding in like stuff that hasn't been out yet and stuff. Actually, Frozen 2 is on there now and we still haven't seen that, so we need to watch that. But before we get to TV, another thing we've done recently, and we have been vlogging this week, the vlog will be up probably this weekend. I'm just gonna do like a weekly vlog um, as much as I can while we're kind of homebound for a while. So we are pulling out, we pulled out a bunch of board games that we haven't played in years and we figured we're just gonna have like a competition between us and just kind of keep it going night to night like Scrabble and cards. We like playing like Rummy and stuff like that. So we're just trying to find ways to vary our days. <laughs> All right, TV. My favorite show right now is Superstore. It is a show that when I first saw like random clips of it, you know, I was like, that sound, it just didn't look that funny to me. I'm like, yeah, okay. Like it's kind of like a Walmart-esque store. And I'm like, I don't really care. No, I'm telling you, watch it. That is the show that both my husband and I were so blindsided by because it is so hilarious and wonderful. And you love the characters. Like I love Superstore. The, this is gonna sound crazy, the same level I love The Office. And that is a very deep rooted love for me. And so that's the show that like, there are four seasons out, it's still going on, it's all on Hulu. We just watched an episode with lunch today. Like we watch the entire thing through, we've watched the entire thing through like four times now. And it's such an easy watch show, like it's happy and funny and lovable and it's, it's a bright, happy show. So that, honest to goodness, is my number one recommendation if you've never seen it. Started at the beginning on Hulu and just, you will love it. You will thank me later, I promise. We've gotten some of our friends and family onto that show and they were like, oh my gosh, you were right. It's so good. Another show that randomly came to mind and I don't really talk about much is the show New Girl. Now that show is done for, I think it's on Netflix. Um, I watched the whole thing through, you know, years ago and it is so good. It's funny too, but there's a little bit more story to it and it's, it's just a good show. And I literally wrote it on my list as something, I think I'm gonna start back at the beginning and rewatch the whole thing because it's just, I love that show so much. There's so much heart in that show, but again, it's hilarious and you love the characters. You will not be surprised to hear me say Bob's Burgers is again, one of those shows that totally side swiped us. That's not the term. Anyway, we were so surprised like five or six years ago when we started watching it by how much we liked it. I think we accidentally started watching it and we just didn't stop. And now again, we've seen every episode of that and they're still making them probably seven times through. <laughs> we just love it. It's one of those shows now, it's a comfort show. We'll just have it on in the background on a rainy gray day. And you know, it's just so good. It's so good. I'm gonna be saying this about all these. It's gonna be a broken record. Okay, moving on. Tyler, when I was asking him like, hey, what are our favorite shows? Cause I was literally sitting downstairs with coffee and writing down a list. Cause I was like, I just, I feel like when I try to name shows I like, I can name like two. And then I'm like, what else do I like? I don't, I forgot seemingly anything I've ever liked. <laughs> he wanted me to mention Golden Girls, obviously an older show from the eighties. That is a good show. And I didn't know anything about it other than like who was in it until I met him. 
And I've, I, I don't know that I've seen every single episode. It's a good show. And that's a very happy show for him, I know. And so he's watched that through a lot too. But Golden Girls is kind of like a social phenomenon even now. Like there are so many people that love it, like younger people, not necessarily people that were older in the 80s or even now. It's just one of those shows that kind of transcends generations. And it's just funny. It is just funny. Tyler's playing piano downstairs. Can you hear him? So we've got my daughter, my toddler napping right now, or at least I think she is. He's playing piano because he was working and I know usually I'll hear the piano start playing when I know he's just like frazzled and needs a break. He'll go down and play piano for 10 minutes and I think that's so cute. By the way, he's a travel agent and I know so many of you guys are sending such kind words because you know obviously with trips being canceled, which is obviously understandable given what's going on, it's been tough for him because he's having to deal with helping, you know, cancel trips and get refunds for clients and all that. So it's been a lot. So he's getting back to a better place now where he's gotten a lot of that stuff done, but it, it's just a lot. It's a lot for everyone right now. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, fantastic show. That show has won a weird amount of awards, if I'm like of Emmys, which kind of surprised me, but it is really good. It's more of a cop show. Um, but it's like a comedy, obviously. Andy Samberg is absolutely hilarious, but again, it's one of those shows that every character is so, you love them all, and they're all so funny, and it's also like there are heartwarming moments, and, but it's a little different than like, I watch a lot of comedies like The Office and Parks and Rec and Superstore. It's very different because it's cop-centered, and so it's just different jokes than you would normally hear. You know what I mean? But that's another one they're still making and they have a lot of seasons out and that one's on Hulu, I'm sure too. Parks and Rec, Netflix, fantastic show. I was one of the people that like, I had watched The Office originally and when Parks and Rec started, I was like, just trying to be The Office, no way. And then of course, like years later, I finally watched it and I'm like, yep, it is so good. Just because in so many of these, are in the style of The Office to a certain extent. Parks and Rec is definitely more like The Office, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they're all so good. And so I just, I just love them. Gilmore Girls is another one that's no longer filming, obviously, but they did do an updated Gilmore Girls A Year in the Life on Netflix. And so it was four long episodes, almost like four movies in a way, but four long episodes for each season, basically to show what the Gilmore Girls characters are doing now. And it was interesting. But the original Gilmore Girls, if I remember correctly, is still on Netflix, all of it. And it's actually where um, Melissa McCarthy, that was like her big break, if you will. And she doesn't really play a super funny character. It's just like a sweet friend of hers that you see, you know, every other episode. And so it's wild now to watch it knowing the Melissa McCarthy I know now, you know? Anyway, that's such a great warm show. And Tyler finally, it's clearly geared towards typically women. But Tyler was so tired of hearing me and like everyone else on the internet talk about it, he finally watched it and he was like, okay, I get it. It's a very warm show where like the town is so cute and charming and so it just, it's like it's always fall there in my head and the leaves are always, oh, I can't, I've got the goosebumps talking about. That show is special. That is a special show. So that's one that if you've never seen it, you'll probably love it. You'll probably love it. Oh my gosh, Shit's Creek. Wow, that one I think is just about to end or maybe just ended. That show is so good. It's actually a Canadian show technically, but like Eugene Levy and his actual son Dan Levy is in it. And I think even his daughter's in it, but she plays a more minor character. But it is so, so funny. And again, I, I laugh and cry in so many episodes. So highly, highly recommend. I'm genuinely sad that it's almost over, but that's one that I will definitely be re-watching over and over again because it's a happy show. Okay, a couple of honorable mentions. AP Bio, really, really good in a classroom setting, so it's extra funny to me, and it's got the guy from Always Sunny in it. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, love it. That one's over with too, but set in New York City, a woman that was like in a bunker for years, finally escapes and is like basically just doesn't know anything about the world today, and it's so funny. Nathan For You, random show that we stumbled upon. I almost don't want to describe it to you because you have to watch an episode and you'll be like, what is this show? But it is tear jerkingly funny. He like pretends to be a really good businessman, but it's like this character he's playing, but it's like a documentary of him helping businesses, but he's absolutely a terrible businessman. But of course he's a comedy like actor type person. It is so funny. Watch an episode, come back and thank me then. 
Some other ones that I just love that I kind of typically, like Tyler doesn't watch, but I watch would be This Is Us. I need to catch up on This Is Us, but that's one I just enjoy. That's typically like a folding laundry show for me, you know, kind of like a soap opera for my mom would have been. That's my soap opera today. Love This Is Us, love the characters, the music, the soundtrack, that the music they're picking for that move, that show is chef's kiss. I also really like Million Little Things. I also need to catch up on that. That's kind of in the same vein as This Is Us, like a similar kind of dramedy, mostly drama, but it's like heartwarming too. And But this one's more focused on friends, whereas This Is Us is more focused on family. Uh, and there's some deep stuff that happens in the first episode of Million Little Things, but don't let that turn you off because it quickly veers and you, it's a really good show. Other shows Tyler and I have watched together, The Crown. If you like history or you're even slightly interested in the royal family, The Crown is so, so good. And it is so fun to like watch an episode and then get on YouTube and see like the real story behind it and keep going back and forth like that. It is incredible. Downton Abbey, an older one, fantastic show. Again, you gotta love history and that kind of stuff, but that's one I would like to watch the entire thing again. I've only watched it through once because it's a lot, but it is so good. Stranger Things, of course, is still going on. That's on Netflix, great show. I would never say that's like one of my favorite shows, but I do, I do enjoy it. Big Little Lies, that one, was it only two seasons maybe? Wow, you do have to have HBO for that. Oh my gosh, though, oh my gosh, it is, it, you, it's one of those shows you can't look away and you cannot wait till the next episode. You know what I mean? All right, I think that's all I'm gonna talk about TV wise. Let me know if I didn't name something that you love, what your recommendations are below because I'm certainly always looking for new shows to watch. All right, let's talk books. So I use the app Goodreads. A lot of you guys have asked me to share my uh, account with you guys on there, but honestly, I don't have a lot separate from my YouTube life, so that's something I like to kind of just keep separate. I feel like I'm going through a renaissance with reading in the past like year and a half, where like in my adult life, I really didn't read a lot. Like I liked reading, but I just didn't have the time when I was in college, and then when I started teaching, I mean, with what time are you reading? You know what I mean? And so I finally have hit a point where I pretty much only read at night before bed, like in bed, because again, I still don't have the time, but I'm reading way more, like even reading for five minutes, it, not, it ends up knocking me out and I sleep better anyway. But reading for like five to 10 minutes before bed, I'm knocking books out. It's kind of surprising. So you might surprise yourself. I invested in a Kindle and it is, I was kind of against it because I'm of that, you know, this is gonna be a long video, y'all. But I'm kind of of that like romantic like notion where, you know, I like having a book in my hand, but the reality sets in where like at night, it is hard because like if he's going to sleep, I don't want to have a light on and I don't like dealing with a book light. So it's just easier to have a Kindle, you know what I mean? Or if I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm trying to get back to bed, I might read a few more pages and that light's not gonna wake him up. So I'm gonna try to go faster through these cause I'm not gonna give you a whole synopsis cause you know. Let's start with like fun and easy reads that I think you'll read quicker and they were just good entertaining books to get my mind off of what else is going on, you know? Crazy Rich Asians, even if you've seen the movie, the book is so fun to read. It is so fun to read and the way the author describes like, you know, people's outfits or even just people's personality and the way they look or anything like that is so, oh, I oh, I loved it. I loved that book. I know there are, there are sequels and I haven't read any of those, but I would be interested too. I loved Mindy Kaling's book, Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me? That came out like probably 10 years ago at this point, maybe even longer. I read that book in like, a day and a half, like on a plane ride or at half. And then like when we got to a hotel, I read the other half, like I could not put it down, but it's just, she's telling a lot of her story of her life, but then going into some of her like career, she was on the office and I think she wrote for the office too. And then she had the Mindy project, but I don't, did she even have the Mindy project then? I think she did. Regardless, it's a fast read. It is a funny read. I loved it. I kind of want to read that one again too. Uh, she also read another book, Why Not Me, that was a little more like self-help motivational, but again, still told stories from her life. I read that one too pretty fast and that one was also really good. Another book, speaking of Gilmore Girls, Lauren Graham, who was Lorelai in the Gilmore Girls, wrote the book Talking As Fast As I Can and she goes through kind of her childhood, like growing up wanting to be an actor and going to camp for it and then going to school for it and then actually landing the role in Gilmore Girls and then landing the role she has in Parenthood and all of that. And again, that was a fast read. It reads the way she kind of talks in Gilmore Girls, which I think is interesting because, you know, they were reading from a script there. So I wonder, I don't know, but it, it reads fast and she's hilarious. And it, I, I really liked that book. I think she's written another book and I, I'd be interested to read that if it, 
you know, I just like her style. Okay, I might say this wrong. I have looked it up how to say it and I still got made fun of. It's the little book of Huga. I hope I was closer, but it's spelled H-Y-G-G-E. And it's this idea, there's a lot of books on this concept of Huga, <laughs> but uh, I used to call it Heidi, so you're welcome. But it's kind of this idea of, I feel like now is a perfect time to read a book about this concept because it's this idea of like that comfort and happiness that comes with certain smells, like maybe fresh baked cookies or candles burning or, you know, being in comfortable clothing or being around people you love and playing a board game. And those kinds of things can actually bring real happiness and real comfort, even though they are kind of, some of it might be material things, but a lot of it is just that your space. And that I'm getting the goosebumps talking about because it really has transformed a lot of the way when I think about like, being happy at home. And since we're all kind of going through this together, that might be a book you would enjoy reading. Really any book on that topic. That just happens to be the one I read. I also liked Girl Wash Your Face, kind of a self-help motivational book. She is a, um, why can't I think of her name right now? I actually follow her on Instagram too. She's kind of a social blogger now too. Um, but she kind of talks about her life and some tragedies in her life that she went through, but then also uh, what her life's like now and how she kind of pulled herself up and built somewhat of an empire and how she's become successful. And it's it's just really good. She's written another book too. I haven't read the other one yet, but that one was very good. It's a bestseller, like top of so many lists for a reason. It's good. Uh, she does talk about religion in it. She's Christian. If you're not comfortable with that, you wouldn't like the book, but if you are, you would. Bossy Pants by Tina Fey, classic, funny, fast read, loved that book. All right, some other books I would recommend that are more serious, but really good reads. The Hate You Give, Whew. read that book before the movie and the book, they were both so good. That is a very, it's a deep, heavy, real book. And so just know that if you're picking that one to read, it's a heavy book. You're gonna walk away with some heaviness on your heart, but it's real stuff that's happening and that's what's terrifying. So I do think it's an important read or at least to see the movie. Wow. A lot of, I, I've really gotten into reading books of movies and TV shows and I typically read the book first. Big Little Lies, I read the book. I, the book was really good. I feel like the book and the TV show were equally good because it was a re it was a really good TV show. Uh, the Handmaid's Tale. I don't know which one was better there either. The Handmaid's Tale, it's such a, it's again, I read that one weirdly fast for such a kind of serious book. Um, and that show is another one I have watched and oof, that's a heavy show, uh, especially in light of things going on right now. Wild by Cheryl Strayed. I still haven't seen that movie with Reese Witherspoon in the movie. Very good book. It's a true story the woman wrote about, like, I think she got divorced and she just straight up was like, I'm gonna hike the Pacific Crest Trail and she did it. And just hearing about that lifestyle and her, it was just very interesting. It did take me about halfway through the book to actually get into it, but I'm glad I kept going because now I think about that book a weird amount. You know what I mean? Like when I'm going on a walk or when I see certain things in nature, I think about it. And I think that's an important thing for me when I'm reading is I wanna take something from it. Outlander, that is a whole series. I've only read the first book. I already have the second one on my Kindle, but I haven't started it. Cause again, that's a deep, heavy book, but it still is fun to read. There's a lot of like fun parts to read cause it goes through history and it's kind of involving time travel. If you like Game of Thrones, you might like Outlander. They're not the same at all but a similar kind of style. And actually with that, Game of Thrones is what I'm reading right now. I read the first book, I'm almost done with the second book. I'm like two thirds of the way through it. I loved the show Game of Thrones. It's very gory. If you're not into that, you won't like the book. Don't even try it. But I will say if you liked Game of Thrones and you feel a void, the books, I am gleaning so much more from it because I have already seen the show. And there's so many characters I had no idea who they were the first few seasons that now I'm like, oh, and you make all these connections. You're like, I didn't even get that when I was watching the show. And it's way easier to read than you think. Okay, a couple other ones, Gone Girl. Again, I still haven't seen the movie, but the book was very good. Could not put it down. Me Before You, which actually has the woman that plays Daenerys. Why can't I think of her name right now? But it has her playing the main woman in the movie. Haven't seen it yet. I need to, this is gonna be my project. I need to see all of these movies. But the book is so good, I could not put it down. It's like heartbreaking, but also like you have hope when you're reading it. And it's just, I couldn't wait to get to the end to see how it went down. Uh, a couple of series I recommend, Harry Potter. If you have not read the series in a while or at all, oh. I've read the entire series twice through. 
I am thinking about reading it again. <laughs> it's just such a happy book and it's such an escape for me, like that world. And you just, when you're reading it, you are in that world. And I love that about those books. Hunger Games, if you've only seen the movies, you've never seen the, read the books, the books are so good and they're really easy to read. I think they're like, technically a seventh or eighth grade level. I'm trying to think of when I read it. They're so good. And there's only three of them. I That's another one I'm like thinking about rereading. So those are all of the TV shows and books. I'm not gonna go into movies. Honestly, I feel like I haven't seen a lot of movies recently. And so I don't have a lot to speak on and that's plenty. So if you're leaving because you don't care about the educational sites, see you in my next video. I love you. If you're staying, let me break down some of the sites I used and that I did a little more research to make sure all of these are still sites and which ones are free, which ones you have to pay for. I will say this, as I was doing some digging, I discovered that a lot of these sites right now, because many people are learning at home, they're free for right now during this whole crisis. So just be aware of that. They might not be free when your kid goes back to school. My number one recommendation, and it is math, is this site called Prodigy. It's a game. It is a game that my students were obsessed with, obsessed with. And what's so cool about it is that it grows with them, and a lot of these do. They'll take kind of like a placement test at the beginning. It still seems like a game, but it'll give them different math questions to start leveling them where they are. Um, and then it'll basically say, okay, this is the level we think you're at, and they'll start you there. And the kids literally work their way through the standards. And it is so genius because it continues to grow with them. It will teach them how to do it. There's like scratch paper on there on the website, you know, on the game where they can work through pro problems if they need. It is so incredible. I always told my students, because the scratch pad's kind of hard to use with a mouse, so I always told them to have a dry erase board and marker next to them so they could do it, uh, just because it kept it easier, and then they could actually, because some kids would like rush through it and just be like, oh, it's long division, I'm just gonna guess and keep getting it wrong. It's like, no, no, just do it all. anyway. So just a quick recommendation for any of these, get dry erase board and marker, Perfect, or just of course paper and pencil. Also on most of the iPad models that are out now, the Notes app has a drawing feature. So they could even do it in the Notes app if they had like a stylus or their finger or whatever. Another one that I personally loved was Flocabulary, but they're basically these kind of hip hop infused videos and songs that go along with certain vocabulary. So they have them by grade level and that's how I use it, but they also have it by subject matter and certain things like history things. I love Flocabulary. They have quizzes on the words, they have quizzes on the concepts, uh, or like times in history. It's incredible. It is an incredible resource. I got so many of my teacher friends onto that uh, back when I was teaching because it's so many kids, they loved it. And then the songs they could remember and they'd remember those things for a long time. Music is very powerful. Brain Pop is always fun. Most of your kids probably know what Brain Pop is. Again, it's not typically free, although some of them you can find on other sites. Um, like some of the little videos, depending. Um, but right now they are offering it free during this crisis. But again, it's got videos to teach different concepts, all kinds of different grades and topics. And then they'll have little quizzes kids can take, whether it's online or you can print them yourself if you want to. Some other math ones I like, Khan Academy is a very well-known one, very well-respected and revered. It is completely free. Again, it will grow with your kid if you want it to. Um, they have all different subjects as well. So it's kind of a one-stop shop, if you will, and it is free. Uh, Learn Zillion is not free, typically, but the interactive videos that will teach different concepts, and I think it's only math on Learn Zillion, those are free, and I use those a lot in my classroom. PBS and Scholastic always have resources on there, especially for younger kids, but they have stuff for older ones too. Definitely worth looking into PBS and Scholastic. Read, Write, Think and ReadWorks are both two really good sites for reading. ReadWorks has leveled text based on your grade and different things. They also have it set different by different topics and subjects. And then of course they have different quizzes and comprehension questions that they can take based on the passages they're reading. They even have vocab you can learn from the different passages. So it's really good. Some of the passages can be a little dry. That's what I remembered. I, I did use it from time to time, but um, it can be a little dry. And Read, Write, Think just has a wealth of different stuff on there, and I'm pretty sure everything on there is free too. And the last one I wanted to mention are different quiz sites like Kahoot and Quizlet. 
those are sites where you can actually create quizzes yourself. That's what I would do like for review games. It was really fun. We do it like once a week uh, to review for maybe a vocab quiz or something like that. The kids love it. They use their device to answer the questions and it's, it's, it's very fun, very interactive. It's way more fun, obviously, in a classroom because you're with friends and you're working together, you're competing, whatever, but um, it can still be fun at home. At least it's something different. You can create the quizzes for them if you want, but you can. there's a ton that are already created on those sites. So if you search certain subject matters. So those are my biggest recommendations. There are a million sites to comb through. Literally, as I was looking all these up, other ones were popping up. I'm like, oh my gosh, it is overwhelming. But those are the ones I have had firsthand experience with that I trust and would recommend. I hope that's helpful for, to you guys. I know it's so overwhelming. Um, just being home a lot, I can only imagine, you know, when Gigi is older, how much it's just tricky and it's hard and all of our lives are different right now, but you know what? It's temporary. I was just texting a friend and I'm like, we just have to remember it's for now, not forever. It's not forever. And so we'll just get through it. And someday we'll look back on this and laugh and go, oh my gosh, remember all those memories we made? Remember that one month or two months or however long that we were all at home and we, you know, it was so fun. We did this and made those memories. You know, it just is what it is. And we're all going through it. And I, I do feel a little bit of comfort knowing that we're all going through the same thing. That does bring me a little bit of solace. So I love you all. I hope you're still doing well. If you have recommendations for videos, of course, always let me know. Um, I got a pretty good list going for what I want to do, but I always welcome your recommendations. And other than that, I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah! Bye.